Welcome, Dipali. It's a pleasure to speak with you at the NDTV World Summit. Uh, and I think this is the absolute apt conversation, not just for the topic of the session, but in the context of what we're celebrating today at the World Summit, the India Century. Um, but let me begin by saying, even though the topic of the conversation is women in business redefining the workplace, in a sense, it's a bit passe. Because women in the workplace is no longer new. When I speak to Dipali Goenka today, I see a um, powerhouse, a business leader in her right, like any other member of the business community. So let me start by asking you a question about how you, as a business leader, look at the Indian economy today in the context of our conversation of Indian companies dominating what we hope will be India's century. First of all, thank you, Tamanna. Thank you, NDTV World, for inviting me today. For one of the most, I, I love this conversation about women and in leadership. So when we talk about India, uh, let me give you a perspective. You know, when we launched first of our plants in 1993, I remember the time when India was just opening up the license, Raj. They couldn't even imagine that we could make towels. Uh, they said, oh, you must have changed the label. It's not made in India by an Indian company. Now today, when we talk about India, India has become an integral part of the supply chain for all the global retailers. Everybody is thinking about India. When you talk about Walmart, they're talking about $10 billion, you know, kind of outsourcing from India. There's Uniqlo talking about India. So, you know, India is in a very sweet spot not only because it is becoming an integral part of the supply chain, one of the most stable democracy that you see here, Tamanna. You see the leadership in the terms of infrastructure, the growth. You see the neighboring countries still struggling. And where? That's where India really holds, it, holds its own. And apart from that, when we talk about India as a country, the consumption, 1.4 billion people, it's not about the consumption for India itself. It is also about the workforce, which is going to be the youngest for the next 30 years. So for me, that's where I feel really, you know, I said like India is in where? It's the Indian era right now. And I let me be very proud of that and say that, you know. We'll talk about, you know, saying that, you know, we'll be the third largest or maybe the second largest economy very soon. And I think that's what just keeps me going as a leader as well. Yeah. Uh, you talked about uh, India's space or position in the global supply chain. And you work, uh, Wellspun of course works with some of the biggest retail brands. I want to understand the distance that has been traveled for the longest time for India in many sectors to compete. There was um, the cost question vis-a-vis -vis China, the quality question. Do you think that we've surpassed some of those barriers? And today, in a China plus one world, India stands stronger? You know, we are reaching there. Um, you know, with China, China has been the factory of the world for the longest time. And to get India there, we are reaching there. Um, I mean, I'll give an example for Wellspun today. We, our plants are one of the best plants, I could say, uh, uh, you know, in the world, in the terms of textiles. And it is not just about the machines, automation, industry 4.0 that we can talk about, but about our people. Our people are trained in industry 4.0. They are upskilled. You know, we are talking about women, you know, in diversity. We are talking about the entire supply chain with complete traceability, blockchain, and innovation. I think as India as a country, as we evolve, we are absolutely there to offer the best in class. Um, I'll give a small anecdote here and share that with you. Our flooring plant, which is in Telangana, I mean, you see these kind of wall-to-wall -wall carpets today here. You see the wooden flooring. They were all made in China and the other countries, not in India. The entire supply chain was dependent in, you know, to China. We completely indigenized the supply chain, and now 70% is outsourced from India. So there's this ecosystem. And Tamana, let's not forget, when I talk about ourselves as textile industry as well, or the other industries, the MSMEs is the bedrock. 
And the kind of support that the government has, you know, opened up for the MSMEs, I think that again is a great opportunity for India as a story and, in, and being an integral part of that supply chain as well. Mm. Right now, as a business leader, what in your view are the biggest um, headwinds and tailwinds? Let me start with the tailwinds, of course. We are an economy growing at 7 to 8 percent. That's the easy bit. So let me come to you on the headwinds. Do you think the biggest uh, concern right now is what's happening geopolitically in the space you are in especially? Absolutely, Tamanna. And I think a lot of people will agree that when you are in this scenario where I think the disruptions that can happen are going to be more than anything but geop geopolitical. I mean, today, um, you know, I always say when people ask me about, uh, you know, my business and they talk about what do you think about business? What do you think about the demand? Um, I say while India is growing and India has a great opportunity and for us, for us as well as an opportunity, I think it is humongous. But I, I must tell you that the Red Sea has been the biggest challenge today. And that again is an aftermath mm. of the geopolitical sit uh, situation that we are in. So the entire supply chain um, is in chaos. Um, so your supply chain actually where it could have been four months or six months had gone to 12 months. Because you're planning in advance, your working capital is over leveraged. You, are, you, know, you have to really plan when it is going to reach the shores of America I mean, and how do you work backwards? So it is, it is very, very chaotic. So let me tell you, the, um, while there are opportunities for India, because India is in that sweet spot, for us more so because, you know, when I talk about textiles, uh, the Xinjiang cotton is something which is now, people are absolutely uh, looking at, you know, uh, you know, that as a kind of, um, you know, um, non, you know, a starter for any business. So Indian cotton is again into prime here. Mm. Everything is good. But again, the supply chain, leveraging the entire, uh, you know, the whole ecosystem in the terms of timelines has been the biggest challenge, Tamanna, today for me. Mm. You know, we're, we're speaking, uh, Dipali, ahead of uh, the festive season. For a lot of business and sectors, uh, it's uh, one of the prime seasons uh, of the entire calendar year, a good idea and time to also do a consumption check. Yeah. What are the kind of, uh, you know, wins you are getting in terms of consumption? Are you looking for, forward to a robust festive season this time? So I will uh, say that um, it could be something where I will keep it... Um, I, I remember, like, when I saw the quarter one opening up for, in, you know, for us this year, um, it was pretty slow. Quarter two starts picking up. But when I see now we're right in the festive season, still it is just warmish. And you know that the, you know, the shopping will happen in the last one week mm. of, uh, you know, of the, uh, you know, the season. Um, more so, I'll tell you, with the whole quick commerce that's come into play, the opportunities to buy 24-7, and there are a lot of great deals, the consumer is getting more savvier of what she's picking up, you know. So um, I think now the season is about being 12 months. It's not just about the Diwali season. Okay. So I think that's something that you're seeing as a differentiation. The interesting thing I must also add on here um, is the digitization. You know, when we talked about COVID and, you know, where India was at 10% in the terms of commerce, e-commerce, today it is at 25%. And you see this economy in India taking it up more so, so rapidly whether it's quick commerce, it's a neighborhood, you know, you're ordering your food, your best food, or you want anything. You can now order a tal, you can order your sargi. Karvachos just gone by. You could have ordered your sargi, you know, just, uh, you know, five hours ahead of what you want. So I think now this has become convenience. So either you can, I mean, we know, we call it, you know, buy online, pay in store in America, where you can, you know, order either online or go to the store to pick up. Or, you know, you order there or, go, you know, they can be delivered home. So this is the kind of convenience that the consumers are seeking. And more so the Gen Z and the millennials. Okay, so festive season, you're hoping will pick up, consumption will pick up. But we've been seeing a trend of premiumization. Are you seeing that sustaining? Uh, in, in a lot of spaces, you're seeing premium products get more attention. Customers uh, seeing more growth there. Are you looking at that trend? You know, I'll tell you one thing. When economies globally are uncertain, 
The economies are in turmoil. There are two things, the two segments that do well. Either the cheap, the economic segment, or the luxury. Mm. And this is a trend worldwide. You would have seen last year as well, all the luxury brands, they did tremendously well. Yes. And so that's where the discretionary spends started kicking in. Or otherwise, it's the complete, the mass market that starts, you know, the brands there, they start doing well, because this is where, you know, it works. The middle segment tends to suffer there. Okay. Yeah. So you're still seeing that premiumization trend continue? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, Dipali, we've, you know, we've done a sort of a temp check of uh, industry and where you see Indian business going. I want to come now to your story because it's, it's just fascinating. We're talking about women leadership here. Uh, and I'm really curious to know what your journey was like. <laughs> so you know what? I tell my daughters, Tavadna. Always, I tell them, you know what, you have an opportunity to have, uh, you know, learned, gone to college, have had, you know, the way you wanted to. For me, I got married at the age of 18. Um, I had children early and I started working at the age of 30. I was a homemaker and I have two daughters. So my journey began not only for myself, because I always believe as a human being, you have to constantly evolve. And I think that's the way I've always believed in, constantly learn. But it was also important for me to set an example for my daughters. Because it is about that if, if I can do it, my daughters can do it. And that's where I'll open doors for many women, many girls. And that's where the journey of struggle began in 2003. Learning on, you know, learning on the ground, learning from scratch wasn't easy for me, Tamanna. But I think I've always believed in that if you believe in it, you can do it. And if you have the commitment, you can definitely look at and never give up. I, I mean, these are a couple of things that I always believe in. And that's the spirit I've maintained till today. 2010, when I got uh, on board of textiles as well, um, from $400 million to today, we are at $1.2 billion as a revenue at Wellspin Living Limited. I think it's been a very interesting journey because I didn't know anything about textiles. I didn't know how the cotton was bought, how, how, what is spinning, what is weaving, and what is processing tamanna. I learned everything on the ground, but I played on my strengths. And what were my strengths? Because I know as a consumer what a woman needs in a home product. And that was as simple as that. Then again, creating a company, creating an organization which not only does have, you know, um, men but women because in a manufacturing facility primarily they were just men and from eight percent to today around 28 percent uh women i think it's been an interesting journey towards diversity towards innovation and towards sustainability and keeping the consumer at the core and looking at analytics about what the consumer will buy so i think it's been a very interesting journey for me so far you know, that's so inspiring. I think a round of applause here for Dipali's journey and for you coming today and saying that when I started out, I did not know X, Y, Z and I learned it. But Dipali ji, there is one thing that you are a woman, so you are multitasking one way and you are a different analysis for business. How do you understand how fast you can understand in front of you? Because um, I mean, it would be like if I would go with my work colleague for a meeting, they would talk to him and not to me. So, that was the case. But I have always thought that if you have to be able 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 आपने अभी तमन्ना एक बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट चीज बोली एंड ये सबके लिए एक बहुत हम जब डिवर्सिटी की भी बात करते हैं मैं ये बोलना चाहूँगी आपसे कि मैंने अपनी बात मैंने अपनी जर्नी तो आपके सामने रखी बट अगर मेरे को ज़्यादा बहनें और ज़्यादा यू नो मोर विमेन कमिंग इन टू वर्क फोर्स इट्स नॉट एन ईजी जर्नी एंड लॉट ऑफ विमेन हु लग वी टू दैट इज़ वेल हेयर न वेन आई टॉक अबाउट टेक्सटाइल्स आई मीन इट इज़ एब्सोलूटली लेबर इंटेंसिव Hamare, I mean, at Wellspun Living, we have around 15,000 people working with us. 
Now getting that around 20 to 30 percent women in that workforce, बहुत काम करना पड़ा, because family को बताना पड़ा कि आप अगर workload share करेंगे, तो ये काम कर पाएंगी और contribute कर पाएंगी घर के खर्चे के अंदर. So it's been a very you sensitize the family, then have a roadmap for her, give her the convenience, and the important thing is अब rural में तो कर लेंगे. पर आपके जो वाइट कॉलर पे आप आते हैं वहां पे सबसे ज्यादा स्ट्रगल रहती है ओह इट या या एंड यू नो व्हाई आई आई एम दिस बिकॉज़ बीइंग अ वुमन फेस्ड इट सो हैड टू सी दैट हाउ you know the point of what you bring in as a leader and an important part in your sector which is a question of sustainability especially in textiles it's become the need of the hour uh, how do you tackle a challenge like that because we are um, a, a cost sensitive country you have to keep your margins intact as well totally. and you need to move to sustainability totally so tamanna first of all i always say that sustainability is not expensive and you know it is the impact i'll tell you in anjar uh, hamari factory hai kach mein it is in a desert area jahan par agar main batau anjar wo area hai jahan par bhukamp aaya tha 2002 mein you know there is not a drop of fresh water, you know water there and sara pani narmada se aata tha we actually use around 30 million liters of water to be precise mm. और कभी कई बार पानी सूखा पड़ जाता है देन इफ यू वुड हैव यूज दैट वाटर फॉर टेक्सटाइल्स हम पानी यूज करते तो ना तो फार्मर्स के पास पानी रहता yes. ना कम्युनिटीज के पास रहता टुडे यू नो विद आर एस टी पी प्रोग्राम ट्रीटमेंट एस टी आर स्वेज ट्रीटमेंट प्लांट दैट वी हैव वी डोंट यूज अ ड्रॉप ऑफ फ्रेश वाटर एंड सारा हम कम्युनिटी से सारा स्वेज का पानी लेते हैं वहाँ उनको रॉयल्टी देते हैं so that we could use that fresh water you know that uh, you know that sewage water and recycle it and use it in our operations so farmers get water for irrigation and there's potable water for the villages as well and and villagers actually get paid for the usage the of their sewage water given to the villages water. that's yes. amazing so i'm saying sustainability is such an important aspect so for us at wellspun we have another 3 years of a road map that we made how much water so fresh you know zero fresh water landfill zero green being green by 2027 and 2030 is a road map that we have made for ourselves and we report back to the board every quarter about our performances in sustainability and the social impact that we do in our communities as well one of the interesting programs that i have is the upcycling of rags um, uh, you know where जो चिंदियाँ निकलती हैं हमारे ऑपरेशन से हम कम्युनिटीज में पिटलूम पे हमारी जो बहनें हैं वो कम्युनिटी सेंटर्स में आके जब भी उनको टाइम होता है कुशन्स बनाएंगी रैग्स बनाएंगी मतलब उसके रग्स बनाएंगी एंड दे यू नो अपना बैंक अकाउंट खुद ऑपरेट करती हैं एंड दे आर अर्निंग ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड रुपीज़ पर मंथ यू नो बिकॉज आई बिलीव दैट इफ़ अ वुमन इज़ इंडिपेंडेंट एंड एम्पावर्ड द चाइल्ड विल डेफिनेटली गो टू स्कूल and sitting in delhi or sitting in bombay is easy to think and envision okay you know my child has to do his you know education complete but think about india that india where the literacy still is at 60 to 70% look at china which is at 100% literacy rate mm. if a mother is empowered definitely the child is going to go to school right. otherwise you know the father would say to be kaam pe lag ja because i don't have money to support you So I think these are very important aspects, and as as corporates, I think we need to start thinking from the grassroots. So when I say sustainability, I think to create a sustainable future for India, sustainable future for the world, sustainability is not expensive. Amazing. Do you think corporate India is doing enough of its part for sustainability beyond? Um, the marketing bit of it or beyond csr or beyond what looks good or sounds good uh, do you think enough is being done you know we have a long way to cover but i think the journey is still begun journey is still begun in the terms of that 1% that 
that you know the companies have to give for the you know the CSR as well. I think that's these are small steps, but like corporates, if they start looking at India and not just contributing, you know, and not just doing businesses, but becoming the agents of change, is where that you know we'll start making a difference. Amazing, Dipali. Uh, you know, as as we wrap, one message for you from you for uh, women leaders in all fields, may not just be in corporate, maybe in any field, maybe in their lives. How do you take charge? By believing in yourself and never giving up. The road, you know, the road is not easy. The journey is not going to be easy. And there'll be a lot of times you'll feel that I'll, I can just, you know, hang my boots and I don't want to do it. But then that's the time you give that extra effort and move ahead. I think that's what it is. And believe in yourself. Amazing. Thank you, sir. Amazing words there from Dipali Goenka. Thank you so much Thank you, for joining us today.